Shred Nation, I'm not gonna spend that much time on the problem because it's something you either have or you don't. Your girlfriend wants to go on vacation to somewhere like Paris or Cancun, but you wanna go surfing and there's nothing she's gonna like about wearing a jacket on the beach at Jeffreys Bay or camping in the middle of a Western Australian desert. You've got limited money and limited time off work. What do you do? The country of Costa Rica is near center of the Americas, with Nicaragua to its north and Panama to its southeast. Costa Rica's northern peninsula, which you see here, is called the Nicoya Peninsula, and within that Nicoya Peninsula is the sometimes overlooked town of Santa Teresa. Why is Santa Teresa interesting? Well, surfers began camping in the area more than 30 years ago, when it was basically just a jungle. In fact, electricity didn't begin making its way to this part of the world, until around the mid-1990s. And over the past 10 years, this jungle-lined beach has become an international community of college backpackers, yogis, honeymooning couples, and celebrities, many of which are there for the lifestyle and the sights alone without caring that much for the well-shaped peaks up and down the beach. In fact, thanks to the local crew at Malpai Surf Cam, you can see what the waves are like at any time in Santa Teresa by watching these YouTube videos they upload to their channel nearly every day. If you scroll through their channel page, which I'll link down below this video, you can see everything from pro to beginner level surfing on most any board imaginable in waves ranging from waist high fun ones up to double overhead bombs. Aside from the waves, the surfing experience here is really unique because in addition to the local Costa Ricans, you're also sharing waves with Argentinians, Israelis, Americans, Australians, Canadians. It feels almost like a meeting of the United Nations out there and remarkably, everyone seems to practice very kind surf etiquette. You'll find many places to stay in Santa Teresa, ranging the whole spectrum of accommodations from high-end luxury down to hostels, but if you're looking for something that you can both show off on Instagram and that won't leave you with a bill that looks like something from the Four Seasons, consider Otrolado Lodge and Restaurant. First, for an idea of where this hotel is, you can walk right off the grounds onto this road, which you follow for about 60 seconds before crossing the street into this jungle path where it takes about three minutes to pop out onto the sand and possibly find head high peeling rights like this. This room at Otrolado is actually its own freestanding building and contains two floors, a spiral staircase, kitchen, balcony, hammock in a private area, and two bathrooms, one of which is partially outdoors, and the whole thing goes for just 100 American dollars a night, while the smaller single room accommodation is just $60 a night. They both include an outstanding breakfast each morning with your choice of eggs or pancakes or other options. There's even a yoga studio where you can stretch out post-surf. If you want something even more budget friendly, I've also stayed at the Hotel Rarotonga where you can get a room like this for as low as 45 American dollars a night. Now the whole city is organized around this central road running north and south that has a lot of shopping and dining options. On our recent trip, my girlfriend and I ate at Burger Rancho for four out of the six nights that we were there because I think this burger is killer and if you're a fan of pro surfer Cory Lopez, you will love how the restroom is decorated with seemingly endless photos of his face. Another option is Habanero, which serves gourmet chicken tacos on the beach with very good guacamole, and it's a great location for hanging out with ginger margaritas as you watch the sunset and listen to the dance music. <laughs> Two cheap options are Chicken Joe's for delicious chicken breast and this place, which I won't try to pronounce, for well-flavored Costa Rican food that will fill you up easily. Lastly, product C is delicious fish bowls. They also make the best snapper fish taco I have ever had in my life, and I eat a lot of fish tacos. If you wanna see real pricing examples of real meals that I've had at these restaurants, click down below. Now on your way to dinner or surfing or shopping for bikinis, surf wax, and sarongs, you will see tons of wildlife. You'll see everything from iguanas to colorful crabs, birds, small crabs, horses, and everyone's favorite, monkeys. They are all wild animals, but in my experience, they're way more scared of you than you are of them, and none of these guys are waking up in the morning with the goal of attacking you or eating you. If the waves go down, or if you're just looking for some adventure, you can rent a car from the Santa Teresa budget office, or rent a four-wheeler for around 50 American dollars per
per day and drive the 45 minute back road to the other side of the Nicoya Peninsula where you'll find a setting that feels much more Caribbean than Pacific. The waves on this side of the peninsula are usually not outstanding, but there are beautiful beaches and you'll also find a 20 minute hike to this waterfall that's fun to swim at and climb under. It's also the starting point for another hike to more waterfalls where people jump from heights large and small. I am not a cliff jumping professional, so please consult one before you jump off anything. Down below, I'll link more info on this side of the peninsula. So this all begs the question, how do I get here and how much is this all gonna cost me? Well, what I have done in the past and what most couples that I know have done is fly into San Jose and immediately rent a car. I like budget because they're very close to the airport and the staff was very helpful with some requests that I had on this last trip. They also had the cheapest rate on a RAV4 Sport, which was a huge plus. Once you have a car, you drive about an hour and a half to the port city of Punta Arenas, and your goal when you get to Punta Arenas is to get the hell out of Punta Arenas because it's just a hot, sweaty place where you wait for the ferry to take you across the gulf. The ferry ride is definitely not luxury, but it's also not bad. The scenery is nice, there's some food and drink options available from the bar, and it's only about an hour ride. Once you exit the ferry, you've got about a 90 minute drive through Costa Rican countryside to get to Santa Teresa, and it's pretty simple. You just follow the signs for Tambor and then the signs for Cobano and make sure that you turn left when you get to this Y in the road. Then when you see this sign, turn right at the T intersection and you are in Santa Teresa. So to wrap all this up, if you stay at Otrelato for $100 a night and rent a car from budget with maximum insurance, plus plan on eating to your heart's content and buy a few souvenirs along the way, your total comes to about a thousand American dollars per person before you factor in airfare. Of course, you could make that number a couple hundred dollars cheaper per person by getting the cheaper room at Otrelato and by buying the cheaper car insurance. When it comes to surfboards, I ship a couple down with me, but you can also find surf shops in Santa Teresa, like Lost in Santa, who have a lot of rental boards. I'll link down below the list of boards that Lost in Santa has in stock for rental currently. I'll link a lot more information for traveling to Santa Teresa down below this video, and the last thing that I'll say here is if you're gonna go on vacation, go on fucking vacation. Vacation. Don't check your email, ignore Instagram, delete Facebook from your phone, unplug completely and just sink into life. Now Shred Nation, if you live in Santa Teresa or have traveled to Santa Teresa, please leave a comment below telling us your favorite places to surf, eat, and sleep in this remarkable part of the world. And if you've been on any other surf trips with your non-surfing girlfriend or boyfriend, please tell us where you went. Also, what do you think of videos like this one? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Should we make more videos like this? Tell us in the comments below and we'll see you soon on Shred Show.